Discovery Hut, also sometimes called Scott's Hut, was built in 1902. Okay, well, it wasn't really built, it was more assembled in 1902 when Scott's first team arrived in McMurdo Sound. Originally designed for the Australian Outback, it has these giant overhangs with lovely skylights to let in lots of light. It was meant to keep everything nice and cool, not exactly what you're looking for in Antarctica when warmth is necessary to stay alive. All of the pieces were taken aboard the Discovery in New Zealand, and when they got to McMurdo Sound, the crew took it off the ship and assembled it at Hut Point. Before the Antarctica Treaty, it was just left open, and anybody who happened upon it could go inside, and there was a little bit of thievery that has happened over the years. But for the most part, the structure itself has been completely left intact. Originally, Scott had hoped that the hut would be their primary living quarters, but it proved so difficult to heat that it became more of a warehouse and a recreation facility. The men of the Discovery would come over and rehearse the plays that they would later perform aboard the ship, which was iced in in the sound. Scott would use this hut twice, as would Shackleton. These are some seal carcasses left over from one of the expeditions. You'll see there are a lot of foodstuffs that have been left behind. The hut was restored in 2015. A group in New Zealand crowdfunded the resources to be able to do it. It took several years. And um, it looks pretty decent. I don't have any idea what it looked like before and there are no pictures for reference. The discoloration in the ceiling and timbers is from the seal blubber that was burned to keep the hut warm. Here's a peek at the insulation. It looks to me to be felt which would probably be sufficient in the Australian outback, but it was really not nearly enough here in Antarctica. It's a pretty moderate day when I'm in this hut taking this video. I have on just a t-shirt, jeans, and a little jacket that you can get at any REI, but in the high winter, I can't imagine being in here with just a tiny stove fueled by Seal blubber? Oh my gosh, no, that would be horrible. It would basically just be a windbreaker. While the hut was no one's first choice for lodgings, it did come in handy in emergency situations. Shackleton's first solo trip down, it was used. His group left a window open, and when Scott came down for his second trip, he was annoyed. Of course, that second trip was the one where Scott and his polar party died, and this was the hut that the people stayed in on their way back to Cape Evans after discovering their remains. Shackleton would lose it again on his second trip down. This was one of the experiments that they did while they were down here. There were several other structures that Scott's team constructed. Those structures no longer exist. The only other building that I know of from Scott's journey down here is his Cape Evans hut. Now that the buildings are all protected by the Antarctic Treaty, people who took souvenirs from structures like this one have slowly been sending them back. So hopefully one day there will be more artifacts inside this and the Cape Evans hut will give us a better idea of the day-to-day -day lives of the people who journeyed to Antarctica more than a century ago.